so i was i was saying that hope everyone is safe from corona virus yes people who are eligible are getting vaccinated yes yeah. <laughs> Yashoda, 
ಸ್ವಯಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಹಿತೈತನ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಶ್ರೀಕಾಶಾಖಾಂಧು 
गोपेश गोपिका कांता गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी तप्त कांचन गौरांगी वृंदावनेश्वरी ृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे हरे रामा हरे राम हरे राम राम हरे राम प्रसाद एंड फॉर द माला मोस्ट वेलकम हरे कृष्णा Hare Krishna. Okay, so yes, anyone remembers what we did last time? Yes, the soul is unbreakable. It is understood. We cannot destroy it. It is insoluble. and it cannot be burned or not dried correct and they think that it is made from the chemical reaction it is born out of the chemical reaction which is not true right and uh, anything else did we discuss yes we you mentioned that our soul is eternal but the time that this material body has is very limited mm -hmm. so one can choose to be sensible and use it the right way relations yes they come and go we can value but we can also choose to see the higher purpose and together with all the relations go ahead towards reality uh, we need to be grounded actually <laughs> i need to be grounded okay anything else we discussed a very important topic last time i think how we need to prepare for death right yes. so you may have heard of art of living uh, we are we are teaching art of dying <laughs> so uh, in fact there was this devotee who was uh, doing book distribution uh, in one of the western countries and uh, he actually knocked at one door and this lady uh she was about to commit suicide so she was not answering the door and this this person uh he knocked for some time and she was listening she was trying to ignore whether she was contemplating you know how to die and she had tied a rope on the fan 
and uh, so the devotee kept on knocking. Then after a few minutes, he started going away. Then for some reason, by you know inspiration of the Lord, he again went back and uh, you know started ringing the bell again. So this lady, in frustration, she opened the door. You know, can I not die in peace? <laughs> right? He said. And the devotee said, oh, why, why are you saying like this? So then she said, oh, I'm about to actually die. Please leave me. Let me die in peace. So the devotee said, oh, wait, 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 wait. You know, uh, okay, fine that you've made up your mind to die. But do you know, you should know, do you know the art of dying? And then she, uh, he immediately opened Bhagavad Gita and, you know, made her read a few verses and then told her, this is the real art of dying, <laughs> right? How to prepare for leaving the body, not that you live like cats and dogs and die like cats and dogs. Right? So Krishna says, like we were discussing last time, Anti Kale Chamameva, Smaran Muktva Kalevara, Yavrayati Samadhav, Yati Nati Astava Samshaya. Whatever you think at the time of death, you will attain that state without fail. Right? So he explained all of this to this female and uh, she quit the idea of dying. <laughs> And, and she actually took up the practice of Krishna consciousness very seriously. Uh, another quick story, sorry, <clears throat> on the same topic. So, uh, actually, forget it. Let me, let me say that later on. I would like to hear more thoughts and what, on what we discussed last time. And, uh, yeah, and any, any thoughts or reflections since last time uh, when we discussed about how we should prepare for that. Anyone? What happens if we think that oh, we can die any any moment? What happens to our behavior? If uh, if we know that we're gonna die, we live in the present moment most of the time. Because we know we're going to die eventually. And like, for example, people who know that they have cancer, they live every moment happily and in peace because they know that their death is near and they enjoy every moment in a present moment. So if you have a notice, right, or if you know that, you know, any moment could be my last moment, <laughs> we try to live, you know, as much as possible, optimize our life, you know, live it in the best possible way and not waste time. Right? Do the things that we want to do rather than uh, things we are forced to do or we think we should do, uh, but are not eventually so fruitful. Like we won't waste our time in uh, you know running after pursuits that may not really be so fruitful. Right? So yeah. Any uh, any other thoughts from last week? I uh, will quickly move ahead. Today we have some ground to cover. Okay, quickly, any, any one last comment from what we le learned last time? Anyone? You mentioned we are a drop in the ocean, Anu. Yes, we are Anu and Krishna Vizu. Perfect. Yes. All right, let's start with today's uh, session. So, 2.31. Everybody is able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. Swadharma api chaveksha. Sarudharma api chaveksha. Swadharma api chaveksha. Sarudharma api chaveksha. Na vikam pitum arhasi. Na vikam pisate hati. Na vikam pitum arhasi. Na vikam patehasi. Dharmyati vidyat Dharmyati yachayachayo Anyat Dharmyati yudhat shreyo Anyat Dharmyati vidyati Shatri asyana vidyate Shatri asyana vidyate Anyone would like to read the translation? Yes. 
Yes, please. Considering your respective duty as a Khatriya, you should know that there is no better engagement for you than fighting on religious principles. And so there is no need for hesitation. Right. So, Krishna, up till this point in time, he was giving gyan to Arjun. He was, he was talking about how he is, you know, not this body, but the soul. And we saw how, uh, you know, he, he continued how the soul is manifest in the, uh, unmanifest in the beginning, manifest in the interim. Uh, this human body is actually manifest in the interim. And then after some time, it's actually unmanifest. So now Krishna is actually giving him argument uh, that you should fight. And this is, this is more on Karmakand level, uh, frankly, not even on the soul level. So he's, he's talking about, again, giving an argument on the Karmakand level. So considering your specific duty as a Kshatriya, you should know that there is no better engagement for you than fighting on religious principles. So there is no need for hesitation. So Krishna gave the argument based on Jnana in the previous verses. Right now, Krishna will use less elevated principles, one which promises a material reward. Right? So he's going to talk about, you know, what if he performs his duty, what will happen? And what are the reverses if he doesn't perform his duty? So for a Kshatriya, fighting is equivalent to a Brahmana's performance of the sacrifice. So uh, Sri Prabhupada is explaining here in the purport that how the duty of the Kshatriya, so he explains how Shat means to harm or to hurt. And Trayatriya means Trayate. Trayate means to give protection. So Kshatriya means one who gives protection from harm, uh, you know, to the citizens. So he is someone who is, uh, you know, uh, he, Satriya kings were actually even considered as representatives of God uh, in the Vedic culture, and uh, you know they, they were endowed to give to punish the miscreants. So they even you know go to the forest, challenge the tiger, uh, you know, and and that that was the kind of spirit. They would go in the forest and challenge the tiger, right? And and uh, they would do everything required uh, to you know equip themselves. Uh, you know, to be ready to, uh, you know, do administration and maintenance. And that would also mean, you know, giving punishment or, or you know, uh, sometimes doing violence for sake of maintaining the balance in the society uh, where he would, you know, fight with enemy king uh, and, and soldiers uh, so that, you know, his subjects are not uh, troubled by different forces or different uh, other countries attacking him. So he had to be prepared, right? So therefore, Kshatriyas and Antipropas writes that uh, even today, uh, you know, the system has been followed even up to the present day by Kshatriya kings of Jaipur state. So this is 1970s, uh, Shukrapad is, or 60s rather, 60s and 70s, Shukrapad is writing this, that even up to the present day, Kshatriya kings of Jaipur, they follow this. <clears throat> Kshatriya especially are trained to challenge and kill uh, and killing because religious violence are sometimes necessary factor. And uh, for a Kshatriya to fight in the battlefield is as good as for a Brahmana to perform sacrifices. So here Prabhupada is again giving an example of how uh, in the Vedic times, Brahmana would chant the mantras and uh, you know perform even animal sacrifice wherein the animal would enter the fire and immediately be elevated to a human form of life. Like not that, you know, they would kill the animal by cutting the throat and, you know, uh, roast him on the fire and eat. No. Uh, the animal sacrifice given the Vedas was uh, for elevation of the animal to heavenly, uh, to, to human form of life. So all parties would be benefited by such a sacrifice. Similarly, Kshatriya fighting on the battlefield on religious principles is actually beneficial for everyone. Because a Kshatriya dying on the battlefield uh, is sure to attain heaven. And, uh, you know, like, like you said, it's as good as uh, Brahmana is performing. Uh, the Yajna is a sacrifice. So, therefore, Krishna is kind of counteracting the argument that, you know, Arjuna will not suffer sinful reactions because he is fighting on the principles of religion. He is fighting on the order of Krishna also. And he is uh, fighting on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. And even if he dies, he will attain heaven. If he lives, he'd enjoy the earthly kingdom. 
So that that's what he kind of describes here. Yadrichaya chopapanam. Sorry. Yadrichaya chopapanam. Yaduchaya chopemanam. Sarga dwaram pavritam. Sarga dwaram pavataram. Apavritam. Sukhinashatriyapartham. Sukhinashatriyapartham. So, Partha, happy are the Kshatriyas to whom such fighting opportunities come unsought. Op opening for the for them the doors of the heavenly planets. Yes. So, uh, he's again, uh, this is almost on a material platform, giving material, you know, allurements, right? So, mm -hmm. so part, the happy are Kshatriyas to whom such fighting opportunities come unsought, opening to them the doors to heavenly planets. So, this is exactly what we just discussed, that uh, if, uh, like, like Shri Prabhupada is saying, as Supreme Teacher of the world, Lord Krishna condemns the attitude of Arjuna who said, I do not find any good in this fighting. It will cause perpetual habitation in hell. So such statements by Arjuna were due to ignorance only. He wanted to become non-violent in discharge of his specific duty. And for a Kshatriya to be on battlefield and to become non-violent is a philosophy of fools. Right? So uh, it, it was not befitting for Arjuna. In fact, Arjuna, uh, you know, in the first chapter, we saw how he was feeling how it's a lose-lose situation. But Krishna here is saying it's a win-win situation, right? If you die, the door of heaven is open for you, right? And uh, if you live, you enjoy the earthly kingdom. Right. Uh, Prabhuji, can I ask one question? Yes. Uh, so when you are saying that Kshatriya's duty is to fight and protect the citizen of the kingdom, is it the both way? Those who are fighting for Adharam also will get heavenly planets if they die in the battlefield? If they are protecting their citizens, that's the duty of the king, right? So even ah, okay. <laughs> fighting, okay. right, uh, to protect his citizens would have attained heaven, right? But Ravana was not fighting just to protect his citizens. Ravana was fighting for his own cause. Yeah, right? yeah. He did not care for the citizens. So it's a duty of the king uh, to take care of the citizens like children. And of course, it's a duty of the king to actually spiritually uplift uh, you know, the citizens. That's that's the real duty. So, the main duty of Kshatriya kings, they were also Raj Rishis. They were actually Rajas or king, but Rishis at the same time. And they were guided by a good council of Brahmanas. Right? Uh, you see Maharaj Dashrath. He is known as Dashrath. He could fight in 10 directions at the same time. He was so expert in administration and there was a great history of his family giving in charity. Right? So, uh, and, and, and so many great personalities in the same dynasty, right? There was uh, King Sagara who actually gave the benediction to the ocean uh, and, and, mark, and, and allowed it to increase its limits, etc. So, all sorts of, uh, you know, great personalities uh, in that line. And yet, he was, uh, you know, just like behaving like, you know, a very, very humble person in front of Vashishta Muni. Almost as if he's an ignorant fool, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. Or... Uh, he, he represented himself so humble and he would, you know, readily accept guidance in that mood. And, and that's that's the real mood of a disciple, actually. You should never think that, oh, we know this. You know, <laughs> like that. So we should always have the attitude that, uh, no, I don't know. I'm actually foolish. Let me hear. Or, uh, you know, let me let me learn. No matter how, how much we have studied Shastra, in front of Guru, one should always you know, present himself as a fool and be ready to learn. That way, is, uh, you know, the full mercy of uh, the spiritual master is bestowed on the disciple. And, and Krishna, he, uh, he loves that humility. Krishna is very, very attracted by this humble attitude. Right? Uh, and he hates any devotee, uh, you know, showing pride. No matter how great. So a quick story on that. I think I've related this before, but uh, very quickly. So once what happened, uh, 
I think Krishna, he was sitting in Dwaraka and uh, he was remembering uh, his Ram Leela pastime, right? And he was also remembering Hanuman because Hanuman was obviously, he's always chanting the holy names of Ram and Lord Krishna was remembering that. And he was, uh, Satya Bhama was next to him. And Satya Bhama asked, and then he also remembered Sita. So Satya Bhama asked, oh, who is this, uh, you know, how can you know Sita be more beautiful than she had some pride? And he noticed how uh, you know Garuda was also feeling proud. He was standing outside waiting for the Lord's order. He was feeling proud that you know I'm so quick and so fast. As soon as the Lord desires, I'm there, and in in matter of you know split seconds, I can you know help him reach anywhere. And the Lord rides on my shoulder, so he was feeling proud. And there he noticed that even Sudarshan was feeling proud. Like, oh, you know, I am the greatest weapon in the entire creation. And uh, the Lord, he holds me in his own personal hands. He's feeling, you know, that pride. So, uh, he's uh, Bhakta Vatsala and he's also expert in destroying the pride, especially of his devotees. So, and, and uh, I think there's a beautiful verse in the Gopi Geet. Nija Jana Smaya Dham Sana Smita. Right? So, Krishna... He uh, destroys the pride of people of Raja uh, with his sweet smile or, or of, of his pure devotees with his sweet smile. So just by his sweet smile, he can destroy the pride of anyone. right? And he, he finds various ways and means to destroy the pride of his devotees. So uh, he decided, okay, you know, let me do something about the situation. So he immediately calls uh, Garuda and he asks, Oh, I want to see my devotee Hanuman. Please get him. So Garuda instantly flies and uh, you know figures out where Hanuman is and goes and meets Hanuman. So Hanuman at that time was loudly chanting the names of Lord Ram. So he was doing his bhajan and uh, you know Garuda he uh, you know he stands there you know with folded hand and he requests Hanuman, Hanuman ji, you know uh, Krishna is calling you. Your Lord, your Master is calling you. Come, you know, get on my back. I will quickly take you there. So Hanuman, uh, you know, following the etiquette, he understood that, you know, this Garuda is actually the carrier of my Lord. How can I take the same place? How can I sit or put my feet on the same shoulders? Uh, you know, like the, uh, actually this is meant for the Lord. And he thought, you know, no, Garuda, you go ahead. I will... You know, jump and come. I can also come very, very fast. So Garuda insisted, Garuda. He, he insisted, saying that, no, 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 I will take you instantly. Because he was still proud. Right? I will take you instantly. Come. No, 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 you go. I will come on my own. No, 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 no please, please, come. Climb on my own. <laughs> instantly. So <laughs> this sort of argument was going on. And Hanumanji, uh, like, he pushed away. Garuda, climbed. And uh, he immediately jumped and reached. So uh, even before Garuda, so his you know, pride was almost shaken. And, uh, you know, he, he was like, <laughs> little more of the, what happened? Right? So when Hanumanji came at the entrance, Sudarshan, he thought, oh, let me you know, show, showcase my prowess. And he, uh, when, when Hanumanji was trying to enter the gate, he came right right in front and did not allow Hanuman to enter from the front gate. Immediately, Hanumanji jumped uh, to the east gate and Sudarshan immediately went there, expanded in fact, and you know, Sudarshan was there also checking him from entering. Hanuman obviously never wanted to, you know, uh, do any offense to Sudarshan, so he was avoiding. And then again, you know, he jumped to the south gate, again Sudarshan went there, he jumped to the west gate, again Sudarshan went there. Uh, and checked him. So he wanted to meet the, you know, his lord. And again, he came back to the north gate. Still Sudarshan was there. So what he did, he expanded his four arms, caught the four Sudarshans on, on all directions, you know, put them aside and entered. So Sudarshan's pride was also broken. And then when Lord Han uh, when Hanumanji entered, uh, you know, the palace of Dwarka, uh, you know, he saw Krishna and he saw Satyabhama serving. Uh, Krishna. So Hanumanji immediately paid obeisances and uh, you know glorified the Lord and he said you know uh, 
whether where is uh, jagat Jan, where is jagat janani mother sita you know where is the uh, you know queen of the whole universe whether is where is mother sita so uh, you know satyabhama she felt here you know i am here i am the queen so she expressed i am the queen no 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 you look like a dasi in front of sita where is mother sita <laughs> so even her pride was smashed so lord uh, by calling hanuman you know took care of the entire situation where he smashed the pride of all these different uh, you know devotees and and they all became humble and understood that yes we should have a humble attitude uh, you know when you're serving the lord so similarly one should have a humble attitude while hearing or listening never consider that oh i know all of this right and in fact i was hearing one uh, devotee was saying that even if it's the most basic class we should think that you should sit in the class and thinking that this is for me krishna has arranged for me to listen to this it's it's specifically for me when when you think like that you actually get a lot of realizations from no matter whoever is speaking like the shrimad bhagavatam class is going on in the temple every day or bhagavad gita class going on in the temple every day so you should not think are you know oh, this sanyasi is when he will come only then i will go and sit shubhrapad recommended every day there are classes going on no matter who is speaking in the temple you should go and sit and listen because the person who is speaking is a devotee at the end of the day and uh, the message is meant to you so this devotee was describing very beautifully even when you read purports of shri prabhupad sometimes you know there are very very long purports uh, there are like uh, you know five six pages of purports in shrimad bhagavatam specifically if you read the first shloka of shrimad bhagavatam that's a very very big purport so one may you know think that it's so much philosophy it's difficult but uh, if you just think uh, you know and and write that on top or or uh, you know just mark on top your own name dear you know so and so das right or dear vijay madhav and then you know read the entire purport and towards the end you know your ever well wisher ac bhakti dan swami shri prapa so that becomes like a personal letter from shri prapa each purport then becomes like a personal letter for us right and obviously something from shri prapa coming from shri prapa directly is obviously very very useful <laughs> and we would be very excited to read that right so is prapa has written a has, has written a personal letter to you you will obviously cherish that read it again and again and read it with very very uh, with great care and attention so all his purports are actually letters for us one sense right so moving on yeah so here basically uh, you know again the same uh, thought is being uh, described by krishna that it's better for you to fight and krishna gives this conclusion right asa cheta tvam imam dharmya is it hey krishna atha chetvam mimam dharmyam sangramam na karishyasi sangramam na karishyasi tatva swadharmam ti cha tatva tatva swadharmam ti cha itva papam na vapsyasi ट्यूशन yeah so krishna he is uh, now uh, describing what are the uh, reverses he might face if he fails to perform his duty or if he runs away from his duty so the first thing is that uh, the first thing is that he is saying that if you run away or if you go away <clears throat> you will lose your reputation and certainly you will incur sin for neglecting your duties uh yeah let's let's move on and and specifically arjuna uh, he was uh, a kshatriya who had uh, you know please lord shiva with his fighting and you know attained pashupata astra he had attained the weapons from indra from so many other demigods as well 
and uh, you know so he was so well equipped and he was a great fighter but uh, you know if he if he after all of this all of these achievements he runs away obviously you know his reputation will take a big hit let's let's read ahead akirtim cha api bhutani akritim cha api bhutani bhutani kathi yash katha yashanti avyayam katha yashanti avyayam sambhavitasya cha kirtim रिस्पेक्टेबल पर्सन dishonor is worse than death yes so uh, krishna is again describing what will happen if he runs away so people will start speaking of your infamy and for a respectable person dishonor is worse than death i think we've already described the story where you know arjuna because of his vow was about to kill uh, or shoot an arrow on uh, yudhishthir maharaj because mm -hmm. and uh, he uh -huh. Nice. I said, ask him to, you know, insult him because for a respectable person, dishonor is worse than death. Yes, yes. Okay, moving on. Bhayadranad uparatam. Bhayadranad uparatam. Mamsyat mamsyante tuam maharatham rathaha. ट्रांसलेशन Yes, yes. The great generals who have highly esteemed your name and fame will think that you have left the battlefield out of fear only, and thus they will consider you insignificant. Right. So, uh, you know, Duryodhan, Karna, and all the other great people, uh, uh, great fighters, they will, you know, think of Arjuna as someone who's a coward and would have, who has run away from the battlefield. They won't. Consider that, oh, because of compassion, Arjuna left, left the battlefield, and thus, for the writing, their high estimation of your personality will go to hell. So all that he had, uh, you know, jitna bhi izzat kamaya aaj tak, will all go to hell. Is what uh, Krishna is describing. Avachya vadam sha bahun. Avachya vadam sha bahun. Vadisyanti. ट्रांसलेशन <laughs> your enemies will describe you in many unkind words and scorn your ability what could be more painful for you so again krishna is describing all the reverses right this lord krishna was astonished in the beginning at arjuna's uncalled for plea for compassion and he described his compassion as befitting non aryan now in so many words he has proved his statement against arjuna's so called compassion निश्चया 
ಸ್ವರ್ಗದ್ವಾರಂ ಸುಖ ದುಃಖೇ ಸಮಾಕೃತ್ವಾಭೋ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪಾಪಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ uh and repeatedly you know the argument that arjuna was thinking that he will uh, you know interested he won't be able to enjoy so krishna is telling you can go to heaven you can enjoy the earth kingdom while at the same time you won't incur any sin right uh you said that arjuna reasoned earlier that fighting the battle would cause him to suffer through long simple reaction but here krishna <coughs> that no sin will be incurred by one who executes his duty in proper consciousness and uh krishna here is you know uh stressing on nishkam karma yoga right so previously uh in from verses 11 to 30 uh krishna he he presented jnana he presented the difference between body and soul and uh, you know how he you know the soul never dies he presented the argument to encourage arjuna to fight on base of fruitive considerations on basis of reward and he also explained to this point what will happen if he does not fight what are the losses for him if he does not fight and now he starts explaining nishtam karma yoga that how he should fight for sake of fighting without considering happiness and distress loss or gain victory or defeat and by doing so he shall never incur sin right so and nishtam karma yoga are also on two different levels right depending on the advancement of the course uh, or of one's transcendental knowledge so one who simply has jnana or knowledge he is that he is not the body he can perform nishkam uh, karma or detached work such a person receives no reaction for his work because his knowledge that has has fostered his detachment from the works result so on one one level okay there is there is multiple there are three levels of karma yoga right there is karma yoga with sakam karma yoga which means i actually uh, do certain activities expecting certain kind of results right i try to connect to god or give a portion of my uh, you know uh, results to god uh, and and still expecting certain returns that's sakam karma yoga there is nishkam karma yoga uh, which is actions performed uh, you know for, uh, for the, or or actually results offering the results of fruits of one's labor to the lord uh, without expecting anything in return right so one and and here also there is a you know slight uh, division so one can perform nishkam karma yoga uh, you know on the basis of jnana that okay i am not this body and soul and therefore i should not get attached uh, you know to all these material things and therefore i i should perform nishkam karma yoga without considering happiness distress loss or gain between the fruit etc and you may find a lot of people right uh, fall in this particular category where they don't have a clear conception of god or uh, all they know that oh they have to you know do their duty without you know thinking of uh, happiness or distress loss or gain victory or defeat like that and they are trying to offer the results back to the society or you know 
as an offering uh, because it doesn't belong to them uh, anyways and because the body is temporary so because of this jnana or this knowledge that is not the body but the soul a person may uh, do nishtam karma yoga on this particular level there is a higher level to that as well where uh, and, and and of course even performing nishtam karma yoga on the previous level one is free from the reactions that's the benefit of performing nishtam nishtam karma yoga uh, there is a sense of you know connection to god but the, there's no clarity who's god or there's no clarity how to serve god nishtam karma yoga on the second level is where one has a clarity uh, about who is the supreme personality of god it and uh, you know an urge to serve him right or or offer the results of one's work to him right that's that's more personal and that's on a higher level of uh, you know karma yoga or nishtam karma yoga of that <clears throat> so shri prabhupad uh, he actually describes this and brings in his proper uh, that that nishtam karma yoga actually uh, you know can also he actually raises uh, while describing in the proper he raises the level of nishtam karma yoga to almost bhakti right where uh, you know a person can directly work uh, you know for for the lord for lord krishna so shri prabhupad in his proper brings his verse to the level of bhakti lord krishna now directly says that arjuna should fight for sake of fighting because he desires the battle because krishna is desiring the battle there is no consideration of happiness or distress profit or gain victory or defeat in the activities of krishna consciousness so no matter what is required for serving the lord if you do that you know uh, we won't incur any sin it's called a karma right and uh, there should be no considerations while carrying out such activities that everything should be performed for sake of krishna is transcendental consciousness so there is no reaction to material activities krishna in this verse has directly instructed arjuna to fight uh, though his order is in the form of requesting arjuna to fight beautifully for the sake of fighting actually arjuna's fighting will ultimately be impelled by his desire to fulfill this order of krishna that that is bhakti so krishna later on uh, in bhagavad gita he says now i shall do uh, as you say right krishna after explaining bhagavad gita to him says you know i have explained everything to you now you decide what you want to do and arjuna says mashta mohas pati labdha i am free from all doubts and illusion i am ready to do as you say right so that is bhakti krishna wants arjuna to fight on his order as his surrendered servant with bhakti detached from results in this way arjuna will remain sinless so his idea that oh you know uh, my relatives will die was again based on bodily consciousness bodily attachments or even uh, you know his idea of fighting you know that i will not have any enjoyment i will lose my relatives uh, you know i won't be able to enjoy the kingdoms again on the basis of sense gratification personal sense gratification and that we will see that in the next verse as well but uh, one who is concerned with gratifying the senses of krishna he doesn't consider his own personal happiness distress etc and thereby he can perform the duties uh, in krishna consciousness without any fear esha te bihit bihita sankhe esha te bihita sankhe buddhi yoge dva imam shunu buddhi yoge dva imam shunu buddhya yukto yaya partha स्टडी नाउ लिसन एज आई एक्सप्लेन इट इन टर्म्स ऑफ वर्किंग विदाउट फ्रूटिव results o son of prita you will act in such knowledge you can free yourself from the bondage of words works works right so krishna is he is now krishna is personally saying that thus far i have described to you through analytical study uh, you know uh, and and now i shall explain in terms of working without fruits fruitive results just what we discussed that 
Krishna has been talking, Jnana, who has also been, uh, you know, through logic and reason, try to uh, cajole uh, Arjuna saying that it's your duty as a Kshatriya, you should fight, right? And if you don't fight, these are the reverses. If you fight, these are the benefits. So very logically, and, and also through knowledge of the soul, etc., Krishna has been trying to explain, uh, you know, what will happen. Uh, and now listen, as I explain it in terms of working without fruitive results. So again, like we said, Nishtam, right? Karma Yoga. Oh, son of Pitha, when you act in knowledge, you can free yourself from the bondage of work. So here, in the purport, <clears throat> yeah, it's, a, it's a slightly longer purport. Uh, Shri Prabhupada, he talks how... Uh, oh. So Krishna described jnana knowledge, a difference between body and spirit. Uh, and and uh, you know, the activities of jnana yoga are basically the same as those of Sankhya yoga. So the analytical study of matter and spirit. So Sankhya yoga is analytical study of matter and spirit. And even jnana yoga is similar to Sankhya yoga. To practice either, one must renounce all activities and practice meditation. Krishna, however, has consistently instructed Arjuna in another way. He has told him to work in renounced spirit, not to renounce activity. So here a very, very important differentiation is being uh, described. And that Sri Prabhupada is referring here as Buddhi Yoga, the process of Buddhi Yoga. Right? So he's saying uh, that you have to work in a renounced manner, not renounce work itself, but be detached from the results of the work. Because, you know, under my order, you can work. That is Buddhi Yoga. Acting in Krishna consciousness, what we just touched upon in the previous verse, right? So when one acts under the direction of Krishna, one is performing Buddhi Yoga or uh, even Bhakti Yoga for that matter, right? So uh, one should not renounce the work itself. And this is called as Yukta Vairagya by Rupa Goswami. Uh, Rupa, Rupa Goswami he is one of the six Goswamis. He is described Yukta Vairagya. Not that we give up, you know, uh, oh, this, this laptop is Maya. Let me, you know, give it up. I have to, you know, I understand I have to be, uh, you know, self, I have to do self-realization. I have to stay away from Maya. So let me give up this laptop. Let me, you know, give up my house, etc. No, so that's Falgu Vairagya. That's immature or, uh, you know, false Vairagya rather. Right? So one has to renounce. Uh, how one has to renounce? Shri Goswami describes Yukta Vairagya. Yukta Vairagya means understanding what will take me towards Krishna, what will help me in serving Krishna. I will use everything that will help me serve in serving Krishna. Or rather, I will use everything for serving Krishna. So everything material also has a potential to be spiritualized. Like this laptop which I am using or you guys are using your phones or laptops. We could have used the same thing for all kinds of purposes, right? For, you know, different sense gratificatory purposes. But we are using it to discuss Bhagavad Gita, right? So this is Yukta Vairagya. We are, we are not, you know, extremely attached to our uh, devices, although we may be actually. <laughs> We're not yet at this platform, but at least for now, we are using this in service of the Lord. And therefore, it's Yukta Vairagya. It's okay for us to use it. Uh, and, and it's good for, in fact, for us to use it because we are spiritualizing these material items in service of the Lord. Right? So that, that is uh, real Vairagya. Right? Using everything in service of Krishna. Not that we reject anything which is favorable in service of Krishna. No, 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 no. You know, I won't touch money. Money is Maya. Right? Shri Prabhupada said, money is honey. Right? And I know how to use it. So give me more and more money. It's okay. I, I can take, I can use every penny in Krishna's service. So that's, that's real Vairagya. Right? And we saw in the life of Shri Prabhupada that even if the disciples, they came in a Rolls Royce uh, to, you know, uh, receive Shri Prabhupada or even if they came in a bullock cart, there was no difference, uh, you know, in, in, or change in behavior of Shri Prabhupada. He was completely satisfied in all situations. And there was a reporter, in fact, who once asked, uh, so devotees had actually arranged a you know, very, very fancy car for Shri Prabhupada, uh, you know, when he arrived at the LA airport. And the reporter asked, you know, uh, you know, your, 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 uh, 
So what do you have to say about the royal treatment your disciples are giving? You know, this expensive car, etc. So Shri Prabhupada said, oh, what is this, you know, regular car? It's all this, you know, very royal treatment. They should have actually got a golden car, <laughs> right? Made of gold. It was not an answer the reporter was expecting. It was completely that. Right? We should have, he, he, he thought Prabhupada will, you know, say, ki, nahi, nahi, I don't use this and this and that. But Prabhupada rather said they should have actually got a golden car. Because a spiritual master is a representative of the Supreme Personality God. And he should be served as such. Right? And he then continued, personally, I don't even mind walking. And it would make no difference to me. Personally, I don't mind walking or going in any kind of vehicle. But as disciples, they're doing their duty. They're trying to serve the spiritual master with best of what they can offer. So it's, it's, it's completely okay on their part. And as a, uh, as a spiritual master, I'm reciprocating and accepting whatever they're getting. But I'm not attached. Right? I can walk also. <clears throat> okay. So... Um, yeah. Any doubts or, or let me see if there is anything in the postcode. Mm, one should therefore understand Buddha Yoga means to work in Krishna consciousness in full bliss and knowledge of devotion service. One who works to the satisfaction of the Lord only, however difficult such work may be, is working under the principles of Buddha Yoga and finds himself always in transcendental bliss. This is very, very important. So, Seemingly, you know, we may find sometimes while serving the Lord, uh, it to be, uh, you know, the service to be challenging or sometimes difficult conditions, right? There are devotees who live in Vrindavan all the time, right? And in summers, the summer season is going on, it particularly gets very, very hot. But there are so many devotees who have taken a vow not to leave Vrindavan. So they bear the heat, they bear difficulties, right? Uh, you know, sometimes there is shortage of prasadam, etc. Also, uh, you know, uh, and especially during this time, uh, you know, coronavirus time, there are not many, uh, you know, uh, pilgrims visiting Vrindavan. So, not just that the devotees are, you know, somehow managing and still staying in Vrindavan. Uh, you know, devotees from Iskon uh, Vrindavan, and uh, you know, they are also serving Brajvasis by, you know, requesting donations from world over. And uh, collecting those funds and actually going out, you know, they're, they're preparing literally meals for 10,000 people almost every day. And uh, taking that in trunks, different, different parts of Vrindavan, Govardhan, and feeding Prajwasis like that. So even the, the most difficult situations are turned into opportunities. Uh, you know, if you have that spirit of serving the Lord, and one finds himself always in a transcendental blissful situation like that. So seemingly it may be a difficult situation, but even there, you know, with, with, with the attitude of service, the devotee can turn that adversity to in, into an opportunity. Just like the Pandavas, they were in adverse conditions. They were, you know, facing so many difficulties. But, you know, Kunti Maharani prays that, you know, give more difficulties because whenever we were in difficulty, Krishna was around. We could see him, we could talk to him, right? So that was the transcendental bliss they were experiencing in the personal presence of Krishna. So by such transcendental engagement, what one achieves all transcendental understanding automatically by grace of the Lord. And thus, his liberation is complete in itself without making extraneous endeavor to acquire knowledge. So devotees, they don't have to make a very extraneous effort either to acquire knowledge, like we heard the story of the South Indian Brahmana, who was uh, reading Bhagavad Gita, but he was not, he was illiterate. And he, first, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally met him and told him, you have understood Bhagavad Gita, because he was just trying to follow the orders of spiritual master of reading, trying to read Bhagavad Gita every day. Similarly, uh, devotees, they don't have to extraneously endeavor. Whatever is, you know, extremely difficult becomes very, very simple by mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And you will find uh, devotees were surrendered to be able to do some wonderful things which we think which we may think oh, it's impossible for us to do. Right? There is much difference between work in Krishna consciousness and work for fruitive results, especially in the matter of sense gratification for achieving results in terms of family and material happiness. 
buddhi yoga is there for the transcendental quality of the work that we perform so shri prabhupad uh, you know when he was preparing to go uh, preparing uh, to go to the west he wanted to complete shri bhagavatam and uh, he had already finished the first volume of the first canto there were three volumes uh, and he was struggling hard to uh, get the second volume financed and published and printed so he was you know almost like a uh, you know businessman going meeting people traveling to bombay to meet people to collect funds then uh, in delhi you know frequenting you know the paper market uh, in in old delhi uh, getting the paper going to the printer so he was working practically 12 to 16 hours a day like this right almost like any karmi would be you know putting in that effort and working a job <laughs> right and propa there writes uh, that you know someone may think that we are almost working like a materialist but there is a difference in consciousness we are working for hard for sadhus and krishna so that's the difference between working for krishna and working for oneself nija indriya priti vansha dhare kamana krishna indriya priti vansha dhare premana that's the difference between lust and love okay very very important shloka the last verse we'll do today neha bhi karma nasno asti neha bhi karma asti asti pratyavayo na vidyate pratyavayo na vidyate svalpam api asya dharmasya svalpam api asya dharmasya prayate mahato bhayat ಟೈಪ್ Sorry. So, it's a very, very uh, interesting verse. <clears throat> In this endeavor, there is no loss or diminution. What does this mean? Anyone? What does this mean? in this endeavor there is no loss or diminution sir sir speak yeah yes by performing our duties for sake of krishna consciousness do our duties for his own sake there is no loss and it will it will lead only to advancement in our uh, when we do the duties uh, in not for self uh, sense gratification but for sake of krishna consciousness it will only help us in advancement on this path so shri prabhupada here he writes any work begun on a material plane has to be completed otherwise the whole attempt becomes a failure right you see a lot of people trying to do startups right and they want to uh, you know create a product and launch it in the market etc etc but most of the startups fail because people cannot persevere uh, you know to, till the end uh, and and uh, you know they they give up in between because of course it's very difficult right so we and this is true for all other endeavors also if we if we don't complete it you know the attempt is just a loss of time money it's a failure right but that's not true for krishna consciousness right and and just to give you a quick example uh if you if you you know study uh, in school and you know go to college and finish your phd and then you die In the next life you again have to start from zero again you have to start from a b c d not that you can claim are i was a phd last life so you know i i should you know continue you i should already have the degree in my hand and i should now start working as a you know doctor or a phd doctor in some subject no so to again start from zero right but in krishna consciousness uh, you know any work begin uh, in krishna begin in krishna consciousness as a permanent effect and even though not finished 
if if you if you say for example uh, if you've done 15% of krishna consciousness in this life next life you start from 16% not that you have to you know go all over again from zero and therefore we see how some people uh, you know they may be introduced to krishna consciousness in their 20s 30s and immediately catch up in in a matter of one or two months they will be chanting 16 rounds of hari krishna mantra in a matter of uh, you know few months they will be done with reading bhagavad gita with reading so many other different books of shiva prabhu and they will naturally have that fire <coughs> or or enthusiasm to read uh, you know shri prabhu's books and understand krishna consciousness in depth right so we find how some people immediately catch up why because they had done up till that percentage in the previous life now they are continuing and therefore from 0 to you know 15 it's like a you know rocket speed <laughs> and then you know the person has to move on from 16% onwards like that similarly if someone has completed 50 he starts from 51 someone has completed 70 starts from 71 like that so and and the next part of the verse is a little advancement on, on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear right what is the most dangerous type of fear is it fear is it of death we are going to die yeah death is a fear for us yes <laughs> but i think uh, most dangerous type yes. of fear what happens to us after death is also you know depending on our karma is very very <laughs> dangerous <laughs> so a little advancement in the path of krishna consciousness you know if someone has at least once chanted uh, krishna's name right he is at least guaranteed a human form of life not that he will be pushed down to and again i think it also is little complicated we cannot make it as an absolute statement but more or less anyone who chants krishna's name even once right He, he he can be saved from falling into the lower species of life right and and uh, that's very very dangerous for uh, you know or or getting into hell for that matter right so it it saves us from the greatest danger and there are a few examples i've kind of noted uh, in terms of what are the different kind of dangers we can be saved from so there are some examples please bear with me i think today we will take additional 10 15 minutes i have some two very interesting stories for you and uh, something very important so <clears throat> okay this might uh, this you know be a little technical but just bear with me for the next few minutes so uh, you know we we have some something about 60 70 years 80 years 90 years 100 years to live right now if you look at you know what is going around us so if you look at the calculation of the life of brahma right his life uh, or one day of brahma krishna comes every once in one day of brahma so one day of brahma uh, is equal to i think uh, 432 billion uh, years or something or 4.32 billion years 4.32 billion years and his night is also that much right that that's his one day and 12 hours and then same 12 hours night 4.32 billion years and krishna only comes once uh, in that uh, you know all 4.32 billion years and that to uh, you know the day of brahma is equivalent to 1000 chatur yuga cycles you know kali yuga dwapar yuga uh, sorry sat yuga treta yuga dwapar yuga kali yuga like this is like a cycle of four yugas so one such a uh, thousand such cycles forms one day of brahma and uh, you know it, this is also divided into uh, okay i won't confuse you more so so krishna he specifically comes in one particular manvantara Man, there are 14 manus in the day of uh, brahma who come right and uh, during the seven, the day is the seventh manu uh, you know and and a specific cycle 56th cycle for that matter right krishna comes uh or descends personally so imagine out of 4.32 billion years you know krishna he just came 5000 years ago and you know 
between two yugas say for example between dwapar yuga and uh, kal yuga so between two yugas there is a period called as yuga sandhya which means that there is an interim period uh, between the two yugas which is close to 15000 years so uh, between dwapar yuga and kal yuga right now we are in that yuga sandhya phase actually so uh, krishna he uh, krishna he was there 5000 years ago personally and when he once he departed kaliyuga started and since then 5000 years have elapsed and just 500 years ago when krishna comes immediately in the same kaliyuga fallen kaliyuga chaitanya mahaprabhu comes so chaitanya mahaprabhu had comes just 500 years back and shri prabhupad was there 50 years ago right uh, starting the iskon movement he started iskon movement 50 years ago so look at our fortune right out of 4.32 billion years such a circumstance has come for us that 5000 years back krishna personally 500 years ago lord chaitanya 50 years ago iskon got established by shri prabhupada and we are so fortunate we are still getting to hear from shri prabhupada disciples about shri prabhupada and about uh, you know krishna consciousness in general so <clears throat> the greatest danger for us you know practical application would be to miss out on this opportunity and you know say for example because of our sinful activities if we by chance fall into hell by chance fall into other species and you know there is only 10000 years remaining of this yuga sandhya which shri prabhupada has predicted as to be the golden age uh, where you know hari naam will be chanted and you know uh, people will be reading shrimad bhagavatam bhagavad gita all that shri prabhupada has given to us so he said my books will last 10000 years so if you miss the opportunity or even worst if we actually get elevated to heavenly planet and life in heaven is you know millions of years so just one heaven trip you might be spending some lakhs of years there and your opportunity to you know take advantage of this period of 10000 years that is remaining will be lost so that's that's the greatest danger for us right and <clears throat> i will i will quickly narrate two stories now uh, okay let me actually tell you short one story because it's already 12:30 so this this is about uh, his holiness danvir maharaj so his holiness danvir maharaj uh, he is one of the leading uh, sanyasis of iskon and uh, he he is a uh, monk uh, sanyasi who is traveling and preaching so he was preaching in israel uh, this this was early early days he was preaching in israel and uh, doing book distribution doing different programs etc and suddenly a war broke out in israel they have a war with palestine right so a very very uh, previous war broke out and uh, he so all the, the it was declared because israel is a very small country with limited population so all people are also trained in military uh, you know they are given military training to be able to protect the country and at that point in time all the visiting americans also were asked to join the army <clears throat> or to participate in the war so danvi maharaj is sanyasi is there for teaching so he was thinking what to do so he consulted a lawyer and the lawyer told him you know there is a provision where uh, you know you could uh, ask the commander for time for prayers so you know danvi maharaj was suggest okay go join because there is no other way out there is no escape right you have to be on the front line uh, with the other soldiers but you can at least you can keep practicing your uh, krishna consciousness you can ask some time for uh, there is a provision in the law uh, you can ask time for uh, your prayers right? so danvir maharaj in the camp you know everybody had set up a camp there were tents on the front line and uh, you know so so maharaj he went up to the commanding officer and requested i need some time for my prayers so the commanding officer asked okay fine how much time so maharaj said i will need at least 6 hours Six hours. What you do for six hours? So Maharaj said, "Yes, you you are invited. You can come and see." So 
uh, early in the morning uh, danvir maharaj would get up you know around 3:30 would start uh, you know uh, he would take a bath he would get ready he get dressed 4:30 uh, you know before he uh, you know before mangal aarti he would dress the deities uh, give them a bath abhishek etc then he would uh, you know do the mangal aarti and uh, he would sing loudly the mangal aarti and then uh, you know pass out the aarti to others and then uh, he would uh, kind of uh, do narsim aarti tulsi puja uh, then he would go and cook something for the lord uh, then he would do shringar of the lord 715 he will have shringar darshan go in the madhi pushyam songs and then he would give a bhagavatam class you know nobody will be there but still he would give a bhagavatam class and then you know slowly steadily some people you know they started sitting and this commanding officer was noticing from morning till evening this man is engaged completely engaged right he had no time <laughs> to do anything as he was completely engaged in in worshiping the lord and uh, in the activities of krishna consciousness so and and maharaj was doing this publicly right in the open so others were getting jealous see how this person he is getting so much time and we have to go on the front line and you know struggle there and while this man is you know just just engaged in worshiping etc so this commanding officer after few days he realized and he arranged for a special room for maharaj to be there so that he is not out in the open and more people are you know getting uh, you know uh, jealous or anxious like that so he was given a special room and then maharaj was continuing his worship there but still some people were very very jealous and then we are scary you know why we have to struggle and you know this person is happily doing his things so they also got their priests along and went to this uh, you know person i went to the commanding officer saying that hey even we want time for our prayers how are how is it that you are allowing so many hours to this person we also want so many hours so this commanding officer say okay fine i'll give it to you but what will you do 2 minutes 5 minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes at best you cannot go beyond that whereas i see this man from morning till evening he is extremely you know busy completely engaged and he's doing so many things he's moving here and there he's making sounds he's you know rotating fire he's cooking and he started describing all kinds of things maharaj is doing like what will you do 15 minutes jada kuch nahi hone wala tum log so you take 15 minutes and then go on the battle field <laughs> okay so like that you know although he was on the front line in the battle field you know maharaj still was saved uh, you know from from and and then there was a time where uh, you know uh, the complaint reached to the superiors and uh, you know one of the generals called this uh, commanding officer say hey what's happening there right and uh, you know we have to go to this is war and we have to kill so he called for a meeting where all of them were there together the general the commanding officer and the whole battalion was sitting and maharaj was also sitting and uh, this guy asked maharaj ki Uh, he first of all gave a speech and like we have to kill you know so he asked maharaj how would you kill so maharaj said kill who, who is who can kill the body is already dead right we are the soul we are the spirit soul who can kill the soul and this man had no answer <laughs> like yes we're right <laughs> so by the end of it right maharaj continued doing uh, you know his worship and by the end of it there were uh, there were, uh, there were three disciples who actually became disciples of uh, you know his name is ramir maharaj out of that camp general was one the commanding officer was the other and there were few more right three to four disciples out of that camp one one of them is i think parth uh, sarki prabhu i not i not sure if that's him yeah maybe parth sarki prabhu so uh, yeah so how krishna even in such a terrible condition of a war where you were dragged into a war you know he can Save you, right? So even a little endeavor or advancement of the path can protect you from the greatest danger. That's a live example, right? And and there are many other examples in scriptures. Uh, and Guru Prabhupada would say that you know all our devotees we should memorize the verses of Bhagavad Gita or memorize, uh, say for example, Brahma Samhita, Govinda Madhi Pushyam prayers. So these prayers and mantras, if one chants or practices to memorize. they will remember at the time of death and they won't fall down even if they don't practice krishna consciousness they won't fall down into the animal species but they won't uh, you know fall into hell 
So even a little advancement in this path can save us from the greatest danger. So even if people don't understand Bhagavad Gita or uh, you know are not able to practice Bhagavad Gita, even if they you know read Bhagavad Gita a little bit, few words here and there. You know, when, when we are trying, we are there for distribution. We try to give Bhagavad Gita in people's hands. So just by touching, also there is a lot of sukriti, and they are seeing it. the spiritual life starts just by coming in touch with Bhagavad Gita. So uh, even a little advance like that can save them from the greatest danger. All right, I'll stop here. There was few more stories, but I think it's already we are already over time. So any any questions, reflections, or thoughts? Anyone? Any questions? Any reflections or experiences to share? How Krishna saved you in situation? Yeah, interesting story. Can I say something, Prabhu? Yes, yes, please. So the 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 explanation which you gave uh, a few minutes back that even uh, if you can't read like an expert uh, all the shlokas, but the beginning. So I felt very content today because I am not very good at reading because it's a, a high level Sanskrit. But I'm still you know trying with you all. And sometimes I do when I feel you know anxious or anxiety. I just open any page and whatever shloka comes, I read. And I think Krishna is giving me advice on that. So that now making me feel good that I am, you know, when you said even if if it's little bit or the beginning on this path is good. So maybe in my previous <laughs> life I must have started a little reading of the book and now I've reached here. So I felt very good. Yeah. So we are. We all are trying. We're all <laughs> we're trying whatever little bit we can. Nobody is. Yeah. <coughs> yes. Thank you for sharing that. Any other thoughts or reflections? Sir, I would like to share something. Yes, please. When uh, I was that is in uh, two thousand ten. I was pregnant and I, uh, with my mother and with my Masi, I did the Bhagavad Gita. That was my first time when I go through Bhagavad Gita. But the journey started because I keep on, I used to listen the shlokas on the laptop. And uh, then when Viva was born, born uh, she is also into Bhagavad Gita. And now to we are like, uh, at that time, I used uh, but now I started reading well. It took a time. So, uh, we need to, like, like that the journey started. And she's also interested. She's also doing well, sir. Yeah, so, even Prahlad Maharaj heard Srimad Bhagavatam in the womb. And a lot of times we see, uh, even, even my cousin, sister, actually, uh, so during her pregnancy itself, uh, you know, she started reading Bhagavad Gita because for the child. So there are uh, these uh, Vaikuntha children or these these uh, fortunate souls who, because of whom actually the parents also become devotees. So yeah, you should really take good care of your children. Not think that, oh, you know, my son, my daughter. No, this is a very special soul assigned to you for taking care by Krishna. So you should take very, very good care. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Anything else anyone wants to uh, share or any questions? Yeah, one one question. Yes. Yeah. How how can we inculcate mm -hmm. the habit of uh, praying? You know, children they stand and they pray in front of the statues. But the depth of prayer, and as you said, make them read uh, the Bhagavad Gita. How can we influence them? Yeah, so I think uh, the the best way to influence them is to practice yourself. Practice very ourselves, yes. But sometimes, you know, nowadays children. And depending on yeah, how, how small the children are, <laughs> depending on that. Uh, Nowadays, children hardly have any faith in all this. And when we do all this, they say you're becoming a saying. Which is okay. <laughs> <Don't> take, <it. laughs> take this as a compliment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
so uh, yeah depending on how old the children are uh, you know if if there are uh, very small children they easily emulate and uh, we mm. see that you know uh, you know four year old five year old six year olds you know they will f- just follow what elders are doing so that's a good age to start or even two years three years that's a good age for them to get started uh, mm. idea for them to get started actually and if the parents or the grandparents are uh, you know uh, a good example and they will just follow right yeah otherwise also uh, you know the, the best way to uh, you know influence anyone is by their own personal behavior uh, and and if someone is you know grounded in krishna consciousness very easily we, we we need not speak much but if there are others who are uh, you know not ready to listen etc we can start a devotee very intelligently engages so that you know the sukriti goes up for hearing the topics on krishna consciousness you need a lot of sukriti or piety to be able to start hearing uh, krishna katha so to you know to bring somebody to that level a devotee intelligently you know starts serving them prasad right and nobody may so says no to prasad right if you prepare some nice sweet item offer it to the lord right nice nice gulab jamun offer it to the lord and give it to your uh, children or grandchildren right they'll happily eat it <laughs> they won't argue okay are nahi you know your the philosophy is wrong or something they'll happily eat gulab jamun right? yeah or or yes. any other thing which they like right so we should intelligently engage them in some service also right uh, we can ask them to do some small thing not even letting them know that this is actually service to the lord but ask them to do mm-hmm. some simple things like even getting some water so that you can take that water and pour it to the tulsi plant even that is a service right mm-hmm. you know he may not be pouring it directly because of lack of faith but mm-hmm. even if he serves you to enables you to do it that's also service so we should intelligently engage family members like this and thereby increasing their sukriti automatically they will catch on okay thank you is that okay yes thank you all right you should be an example sometimes some things come in the way <laughs> yeah. okay so we will we'll end with a short kirtan um, so everyone can unmute and um, you don't sing along with me once i finish then you sing right once i finish one mantra then you sing so it's call and response when i chant you you hear when you chant i hear mao mishra padaya krishna krishnaya mate mate 